Now we'll turn to California. And uh, David talked about uh, a lot about risk in the forecast. And I want to focus most of my comments with respect to California on risk. And I've entitled this uh, Superior Growth and Elevated Risk. So superior growth just means superior growth relative to the US. And I want to show you some uh, slides on that. And, and then I want to kind of focus on three sectors uh, where there is real risk in the forecast. And they're illustrated here by three pictures. The one on the far left is uh, the Grand <laughs> Avenue project, the one that's going to be designed by Frank Gehry and is across from the Disney Center is going to be uh, is going to be projecting videos on the side of the Disney Center. Uh, and that's just getting started. So that's going to represent uh, the construction industry. Uh, the middle one is a port that is an important port in California, but actually little known. That's the port of Stockton. And you think of Stockton, is, I mean, it's way inland. It's a deep water port. It's an exporting port, and it exports sulfur, bauxite, coal, and agricultural products, and a lot of which, uh, a lot of uh, their exports go to China. So it's kind of perfect for uh, kind of representing some of the risks that we have in our logistics industry. And on the right, of course, is the state capital. And I want to talk about the risk to the state budget because we're just about to begin uh, the next budget cycle. And uh, I got interested in the risk to the, the state budget uh, last May, actually last January, when the governor uh, made his uh, budget message to the state legislature. Interestingly enough, what I'm going to talk about today has been in the newspapers these last two weeks. And the real question is, is California ready for the next recession? So look at some analysis that we've done on that. So the roadmap for today, there. Roadmap for today is first, how is California doing? Uh, kind of a retrospective of where we're at. And then look at these risks to the forecast and look at employment in those three sectors, construction, logistics, and, uh, and state government. What has been going on so far and, and why is it that I'm focusing on those today? And then is California ready for the next recession and then the forecast? Uh, so let's begin with this superior growth. And again, it's superior to the three, two, one economy that David outlined. It's not superior to what we were doing in the 80s or any other time period. Uh, what I showed you three months ago was a five-year average of GDP growth in California and in other states. And these are states with significant populations. So in North Dakota, you add an oil well and GDP goes up 1%. Kind of doesn't, doesn't really count because it's a real small state. But these are states with significant population. California was number two only to Washington State then. In the last 12 months, as the first quarter 2017 to the first quarter of 2018, California's number five is still in the top tier, in the top 20% of states. And it grew a little over three and a half percent, more than, so there's California. There's California. Uh, more than the US, uh, one percent more than the US. So it's these states over on the left-hand side that have really been pulling the US economy along, and California being the largest has, you know, has done a lot of heavy lifting in terms of US GDP. And we expect that to continue. Uh, just looking at what has been happening with all of these trade tensions and our ports, uh, we look at uh, exports and imports through the major California ports. So the, Top one is um, the, the San Pedro ports, that, so that's Long Beach and Los Angeles. The bottom is the port of Oakland. We're shortly going to add Stockton to it, and that, that just uh, smooths out that line a little bit because some of the trade moves back and forth. Uh, but if you look at this, this is exports, and you don't really see any impact of trade tensions there. It's kind of a fairly constant. It jumps around, but it's fairly constant. Uh, turning to imports. We've been importing more because our economy has been growing. But if you look at the trend there, you also don't see much in the way of change in trend. You've got some fluctuations up and down, but not much change. So, so far, these trade tensions have not really affected our logistics industry. Uh, one 
manifestation of this superior growth that California has experienced is superior growth in employment. The top line here, the blue line, is total employment. It comes from the household survey, or a survey of households, and uh, it's the number of people employed. And since the depths of the recession, we're up 16% in number of people employed. It is up here uh, between 18 and 19 million Californians are working. But one thing to notice here is that kind of over on the right, it's flattened out. We sort of run out of people. And so we're not getting much growth, at least in the last few months. However, and this is what you hear on, on the radio, is uh, the bottom line, payroll jobs. Payroll jobs are up over 20% since the bottom of the recession, and, uh, and they continue to increase. So last month at August, we had 45,000 new payroll jobs in California. So how do you reconcile those two? Well, it might just be they're different surveys, and, and, and this is data error, uh, but we have very tight labor markets in California, and tight labor markets means that if you're hiring or if you're employing a 1099 contract worker and you want to keep them, you might have to move them into a payroll job with benefits. And that's some of what we're seeing here in California. That's good for employees, and, and that's really boosting their uh, take home, their, their total compensation. So that's, how, that's what kind of reconciles this. But we've been at full employment for some time, so we're really running out of people to employ. Uh, the, you know, this 21% this, uh, growth, that's 3 million jobs. And I want you to keep that 3 million in mind, because uh, we're going to refer back to it shortly. Uh, but where are the jobs? So this, is, this represents uh, the sectors. And over on the right, we have uh, mining and logging. That's mostly petroleum in Kern County. And this is a percentage growth. That's a very small sector. So just like in North Dakota, small changes make bit for big percentage changes. Uh, next one is durable goods. And durable goods has been declining in California for a decade now. We expect that to continue. The next one is federal government. David showed you the federal budget, the defense budget. That, that's no longer going to be a drag on the California economy. But importantly, on the left-hand side, the two that I've highlighted in dark blue, those are construction and trade, transportation, and uh, utilities. So those are the two over the last year that have been the fastest growing in terms of job growth. And those two are at risk, uh, are, are at risk due to these uh, various risks that David outlined. Then if you just kind of move over a little bit, you get health care and social services. And a lot of that is funded by, uh, by state government and local government. And then education, funded by state and local government. And then the next one, kind of way over on the right there, is state and local excluding education. And if you add those up, we've got three sectors that are kind of important here in generating jobs in California. Another way to look at this is just sector by sector. So this is construction. And you see the, the speculative building boom that happened right before the Great Recession. We were up at about 950,000 jobs. We dropped about 550,000. And now we're up we are up 300,000 jobs uh, in, in the mid 800,000. So construction has been a real engine of job growth here in California. Uh, our second sector is logistics. This, kind of, this strips out the utilities part. And you see it's been kind of fairly flat, but then since 2010, it's just taken off. Part of that is due to the shift to online uh, shopping. But part of it is due to that trend that you saw in imports through the uh, California ports. The increasing income in the economy has drawn in imports from Asia, and that has supported growth in our logistics industry of 189,000 jobs. Uh, the next one that we want to look at is government. Now, this includes federal government, so those two spikes you see are census workers. Uh, but federal government has been zero to negative, so all of the growth here is in state and local government. And that, too, has been uh, pretty dramatic, 224,000 jobs. So if you add these up, you get one in four jobs 
that have been created in this expansion in California have been in construction, logistics, and state and local government. So three kind of important sectors as we think about the continuation of this expansion. And, and so the risks to the forecast, and these are risks external to California, uh, are, are mostly in the potential for trade wars. So the risk in construction, we have rising interest rates, but in California, the demand for housing is particularly strong. And so our view is that we're gonna to continue to increase the number of homes built per year in California. And, and, and that's just a function of state and local governments easing up on zoning, and it's a function of, um, uh, of uh, increased prices making building homes more profitable. But the risk here comes from trade wars. Because in the non-residential construction, the one area that's been hot, and, and we highlighted this in, in the uh, Alan Matkins UCLA Anderson forecast commercial real estate survey, this is why my earlier comment about, let's look at the December survey uh, that's coming up, the one risk is industrial space, and that's warehouses. That's what's been pulling along commercial real estate. So that's at risk with trade wars. We know that logistics is at risk with trade wars. And so those are two risks that are external. We want to keep our eye on that. It's a risk for the US economy. It's a risk for the California economy. But the one that I want to spend the rest of the time focusing on is the provision of public services. Okay, And, uh, and, and what about that? What are the risks here? Well, that depends on tax revenue. So we've done some analysis of that. Uh, and, and let me just kind of anchor this in what's been happening in uh, Sacramento. So this is what the, was from the May governor's budget message to the legislature where he said, uh, we're projected to have a healthy one-time surplus focused on new funds, building up the state's rainy day fund to prepare for the next recession. And then he went on talking about uh, the importance of this. And kind of significant, you see Jerry Brown there, and he's pointed to two big red sets of red blocks in that chart. And those were the big deficits under uh, Governor Greg Davis and under uh, Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger. And he's saying, you know, this is what happened in the past and this is why we need a rainy day fund. So let's just take an analytical look at that. And the way to do that is to first look at state personal income tax revenues. And that's that blue line there. And of course, they've been increasing over time. The red line is a trend that we fitted there. And so sometimes it's above. Uh, when we're in times of expansion, sometimes it's below when we have recessions. What, I, what we did was we looked at the variability of that blue line above and below the red line. And of course, adjusted for the fact that when state revenues are larger, the variability is larger. Uh, and, and so uh, we put together an analysis uh, using the statistical method of variances and standard deviations. You don't have to know about that, but it's a measure of volatility. Uh, but I am going to show you something on that, which is right here. So this is the, that measure of volatility. And this stretches back to 1998. And what you notice is it, it, it kind of keeps increasing. It gets more and more volatile as you get, go from left to right. And there are two big jumps here. Uh, one jump is uh, right before the 2001 recession. So as we came out of the aerospace contraction in the 1990 recession, uh, what happened was we had the dot-com boom, we had internet, we had a lot of startups, technology startups, and that increased the volatility. And that relates to what we're gonna talk about later, uh, later in the day. And then the other one here is after the 2008, 2009 recession, and the same kind of thing happened. Growth has been, has been uh, driven by an expansion of technology, and this means startup firms, it means stock options, it means a lot of things that, that are um, important in generating state income tax revenue during an expansion, but kind of evaporate during a recession, right? You don't do IPOs, you don't exercise your stock options, you don't earn big bonuses during recessions, and, and so that's sort of the source of this volatility. Okay, so let's uh, now turn to uh, what were the results of the analysis? And we did two experiments. One is what I call a garden variety recession. 
So this is a recession that, you know, is, is not a huge recession. It's one that, you know, statistically speaking, when we have a recession, 30% of the time it's as bad as that or, or worse. And um, we, we don't have garden variety recessions in California. We have really unique recessions, but this, you, you know, you have to do something. So the garden variety recession, and the question is what's gonna happen as we go from above trend to below trend? And the answer is uh, that the general fund, the state general fund is gonna drop by uh, $18.7 billion, but it usually drops two years, at least two years in a row. So the second year, it's gonna be $17.5 billion, giving a total impact of $36 billion shortfall. That sounds like a big number, but remember, it wasn't too long ago when Sacramento was talking about a $46 billion shortfall. So kind of a reasonable number over a two-year period. Well, maybe we have a much more mild recession, and so we looked at one where all recessions in California, statistically speaking, 60% uh, of the time or two thirds of the time would be at least as bad or worse. And so this mild recession, if we can get it up there, uh, mild recession first year 17 billion and then second year 14 billion for a total impact of 31 billion. Not a lot of change. Now what's important here is that in that governor's message that I showed you was projected that at the end of the year, California would have a rainy day fund of 13.8 billion. That's not enough. That's not near enough. And so this is more like a drizzling day fund or like an umbrella that's got, you know, kind of holes in it. You're gonna get wet, maybe not as wet as you would have otherwise, but you're still gonna get wet. Uh, so the rainy day fund, you know, kind of isn't sufficient. But kind of to be fair, there are a lot of important issues in California. We're gonna be talking about those with respect to workforce development uh, in the second part of the program. Those issues I mean, what do you do with limited resources? Do you put it in the rainy day fund or do you educate the kids today? And those are the decisions that are gonna be facing California, then California's next governor and the budgets uh, that he will be proposing. Uh, and why is it that there was not much difference between a garden variety and a mild recession, this is it. It's all in capital gains. The red line that you see here is personal income tax. The black line is capital gains tax. Uh, and, and they're a little bit off center. And that's because uh, income is taxed in a calendar year, but is recorded in a fiscal year. But if you adjust for that, there's a really high correlation in the change in capital gains taxes and the change in, in the general fund. And, and that's that volatility that is created by California becoming an entrepreneurial economy, and that hasn't gone away. In fact, that has been exacerbated by, uh, by Prop 30. Uh, just to highlight this, 10 of California's counties pay a three quarters of all of the state's uh, in income tax. It's a little bit unfair because, you know, LA is a big county, Alpine could kind of fit in this room in terms of population. Uh, but it really is one of a lot of disparity. This is uh, zip code 94301. And probably a lot of you said, oh, that's got to be right in the heart of Silicon Valley because they paid $1 billion in income tax last year. So it, there, there is this kind of real disparity, really dependent on the tech industry that we're going to be focusing on in the rest of the program today. So that brings us to the forecast. It follows the U.S. with employment 2.1% this year, 1.6% uh, in 2019, 2020 slowing to 0.6%. Again, we're just running out of people. Uh, but unemployment rate staying at full employment, a couple tenths of a percent above the U.S., which is very normal for California. Per good personal income growth, better than the U.S., and uh, housing, remember I said housing wasn't gonna roll over as in the national forecast, we get up to 140,000 units uh, per year in our forecast. But the risks do indeed abound. And so I'd like to leave you with this image since we've been talking about trade with China, this image of a uh, Panamex freighter with 14,000 containers on it and it's going through rough seas and that's kind of what's happening. Our 
forecast is it's going to continue until it gets to the port of Long Beach and, uh, and unloads, it unloads its containers. But as we know, there are typhoons in the Pacific. And so it might not make it with all of those, uh, with all of those containers. So that's the image I want to leave you with for the California forecast. Thank you.